Hello again and welcome to Pick Yourself, the podcast that helps you build a meaningful electronic music career. If your goal is to create and release outstanding music on respected labels, get better bookings and grow a tribe of true fans instead of just social followers, then this show is for you. My name is Philip, thanks for tuning in and now let's get right into today's episode. Welcome to episode 37 of Pick Yourself. I'm stoked to have you here with me again. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time and listening to the show every single week. In case you want to join my journey here, make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And also, in case you're one of the diehard fans of the show and you listen to every single episode, you can do something to support me. That would be awesome. Just take a couple of seconds to leave a review on your podcast app. That would mean so much to me. It would help me keep going. It motivates me. And also it helps our show grow a little bit. And that means we can help more people together. And that would be awesome. So take three seconds of your day and leave a short review. That would mean so much. Thanks a lot in advance. Okay, let's come to this week's episode. And I've picked a very current topic because sadly... Florian Schneider, one of the founding members of Kraftwerk, has died. And this band means a lot to me. They mean a lot to the techno scene as a whole and the electronic music community as a whole. And some people would argue that they're more influential to music as a whole and to our culture than, for example, the Beatles. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, but I personally subscribe to it. I think that is a valid statement to make. But of course, I'm not only going to talk about how influential Kraftwerk is. My angle for this episode is to find out what today's music producers can learn from this iconic band. And since the goal of this podcast as a whole is to help you build and grow a meaningful, sustainable, long-term music career, I think that's a pretty interesting discussion to have. And speaking of discussions, you might want to say hello to other like-minded music producers in our private Facebook community. That is pickyourselfpodcast.com slash community. This will forward you to our little group of yeah like-minded people i'm also there of course and we have discussion threads for every single episode but we also talk about whatever is on your mind whatever you struggle with and we try to help and support each other so head over to pickyourselfpodcast.com slash community and say hello we would love to get to know you okay but coming back to our topic of today let's take a look at the shared history of kraftwerk and techno and First of all, I want to give you a little recommendation because there's an amazing unauthorized biography by David Buckley. It's called Kraftwerk Publikation. And this biography is a great, great look behind the scenes. He spoke to several characters that were involved in the band itself, but also people that surrounded the band. And what makes this biography so special is that David Buckley did a really great job at analyzing the different chapters in the career of the band. And you can really see the development. You can understand why certain albums came to life in a certain way. And also what influenced the certain band members and the switch of roles and so on. How that influenced the artistic outcome. And it must have been a really hard biography to write because overall Kraftwerk always tried to stay mysterious They tried to avoid letting people have a look behind the scenes. They always wanted to trick the crowd. They wanted to trick the publicity. And that made it so difficult to find out what really happened behind the scenes. I think he did a pretty good research in his book. And therefore, if you want to take a deep dive into the life and work of Kraftwerk, then definitely read this book by David Buckley. One thing that I've always admired about Kraftwerk is that they've never cared about genres. And without intending to do so, they have shaped not only techno, but also hip-hop, R&B, and even today's pop and rock music. Yeah? So if you listen closely, you're going to find numerous melodic references, samples, and even arrangement choices that clearly lead back to Kraftwerk. And this is really interesting to see. And whether you like it or not, Even Coldplay and Miley Cyrus have used snippets of iconic Kraftwerk songs. Yeah, and that is pretty interesting. 
But overall, you can clearly say that the most significant impact and influence that Kraftwerk has had on a musical genre was definitely the influence on techno. Those really early Detroit techno artists like Juan Atkins, Derek May, Kevin Saunderson and many other early pioneers, they were fascinated by the rigid but also gro funky grooves and melodies of Kraftwerk. And one of the most famous quotes by Juan Atkins was, um, he described techno as George Clinton and Kraftwerk caught in an elevator with only a sequencer to keep them company. And I think that's a really nice description because on the one hand you have these influences from funk, on the other hand you have these influences from the very mechanical way of sequenced sounds by Kraftwerk. And those two together make up what is the essence of techno or what was the essence of the, at least the early Detroit techno. And a lot of people think that techno was sequenced right from the beginning. But that's actually not true. I found a quote um, by Juan Atkins in a New York Times article and let me read this quickly. He said, Before I heard the robots, that's a song by Kraftwerk, I wasn't really using sequences. And I was playing everything by hand, so it sounded really organic, really flowing, really loose. That really made me research getting into sequencing to give everything that real tight robotic feel. So he definitely clearly states that influence that Kraftwerk has had on his interpretation of early techno. Later on, Kraftwerk and members of the Detroit techno scene started an interesting artistic relationship and even at least a little bit of an intellectual exchange. Ralf Hütter, who is another founding member of Kraftwerk besides Florian Schneider, and he's, by the way, the only original member still in the band, he once said about the Düsseldorf-Detroit Brotherhood, it's fascinating that this music from two industrial centers of the world with different cultures and different history, suddenly there's an inspiration and a flow going back and forth. It's fantastic. All this positive energy, this feedback coming back to me is charging our battery and now we're full of energy. It keeps my Ralf robot going. So that is what Ralf Hütter said about that Detroit-Düsseldorf connection. Düsseldorf is the original city where Kraftwerk is from. And that's, if you know Germany, that is definitely one of those industrial cities. Now, the big question is, how did this whole thing start? Yeah, How did the Detroit techno scene get connected to Kraftwerk living on the other side of the planet. Well, there was a pretty forward-thinking radio show in Detroit called Electrifying Mojo. And just to understand that, back then radio DJs had a lot of creative freedom, much more than they have today. And they were willing to experiment, so sometimes they played whole albums, sometimes they played a whole show just covering one artist. And the whole idea was more about discovering new music and presenting it to their audience than playing the same old top 40 smash hits what you have today on the radio so without this electrifying mojo radio show probably the first generation of underground resistance artists and so on would have never found out about Kraftwerk in the first place or not so early on and just to give you an impression of what that was like at that time let me read another quote by Juan Atkins in an Electronic Beats interview and I've linked to all these articles in my blog post by the way so if you want to um, go to the original articles and go to pickyourselfpodcast.com and the blog post for this show will link to all these different articles okay but let me read that quote Mojo used to play Trans Europe Express and We Are the Robots pretty regularly. But the first time I heard robots, I just froze. My jaw dropped. It sounded so new and fresh. I mean, I had already been doing electronic music at the time, but the results weren't so pristine. The sound of computers talking to each other, this sounded like the future. And it was fascinating because I had just started learning about sequences and drum programs. Okay, I hope this quote has helped you understand the importance of what has happened back then and the impact it had. And on the other hand, I must say that even if Kraftwerk and Techno sounds like a love story from both sides, it's worth mentioning that Kraftwerk have always kept a certain level of distance to other artists, even the underground techno scene. And their holistic concept of music and visual art simply didn't allow for close collaborations or deliberate artistic exchange. Yeah, 
And this is why they famously refused collaboration offers from even people like David Bowie or Michael Jackson. And just as a little disclaimer for the super nerds of Kraftwerk, I know that there are different versions floating around of that story, that specific one of collaboration with Michael Jackson and David Bowie, but let's just not get down that rabbit hole. It's just way too deep. Okay, now let's talk about what today's music producers can learn from Kraftwerk. So to me, overall, there are two different aspects that make up the magic of Kraftwerk. The first aspect is that they were deeply committed to pushing the boundaries of music, but also of technology. And the second aspect is that they never compromised on artistic integrity. Yeah, And just when you look at something like saying no to a collaboration with David Bowie or Michael Jackson, that to me is just one of the signs that they truly meant it. And everything that I'm going to show you now belongs to those two categories. I'm going to show you five things that I believe you can learn from Kraftwerk as a modern artist and music producer. Let's start with the first one, and that is being audacious pays off. So Kraftwerk didn't have a blueprint. Yeah, They haven't tried to copy any other artist, neither musically nor visually. And instead, the members have spent a lot of time researching sounds and playing styles in order to come up with something that was fresh and exciting. Now, of course, there is nothing truly 100% unique or original in this world. I know they also had their yeah, influences and so on. But I mean, back in the 70s, there wasn't anything like that. And people were really excited to hear something so different and unusual. If they had played it safe at that time, Kraftwerk would have ended up as just one other late 70s post-hippie rock band. Yeah, But instead, Kraftwerk decided to commit to experimentation, to trial and error, to using new technologies, to using brave new concepts. And together with the legendary sound engineer Connie Plank in the early days, and then also later on in their own Kling Klang studios, they wanted to reinvent contemporary music by using unconventional recording techniques, cutting-edge synthesis techniques. Yeah, So there were a lot of things that like nobody else did at that time. And for those of you who want to go a little bit deeper, check out Connie Plank. He was one of the leading yeah, sound investigators of that time. He was a sound engineer that helped Kraftwerk shape their sound in the early days. And he was also very influential for the yeah, development of other crowd rock bands. And uh, that guy never got as much fame as he deserved. But still, I mean, he was one of the mentors of Brian Eno, for example. This is incredible if you put that into perspective. Yeah, so read up on Connie Plank. And also there was a super interesting documentary called The Potential of Noise. So if you can somehow figure out how to get that documentary still somewhere online, this is a very, very amazing piece of yeah, background story of that time. Now, coming to the second thing that you can learn from Kraftwerk as an artist these days. As an artist, you are more than your music. This is a really important takeaway. Because more than any other band, Kraftwerk have understood that as an artist, you're representing much more than just the music. And don't get me wrong here, I still believe that the music is the most important aspect of an artist's career. But beyond that, there is the second aspect of your artist's career where you have to carefully choose what you want to represent, what you want to stand for as an artist brand. Yeah? And Kraftwerk were aware of this very early on in their career. So they intentionally presented themselves differently from any other artist of their decade. They never tried to compete with anyone because they simply didn't have to. Yeah? Their style, musically but also visually, was unique enough and that's a pretty good place to be in. If you don't have any like serious competition because you're so different, that makes a lot of things easier. So it's no surprise that founding members Ralf Hütter and Florian Schneider met each other in art university. So they didn't come from yeah, a straight music background, I would say. So yeah, they had a music background, but they met in art university. And from the very beginning, they had embraced Kraftwerk as a project that was much bigger than just the music. And they followed this path throughout their entire career, working closely with, for example, graphic designer Emil Schult and photographer Peter Böttcher, 
And these collaborations allowed them to control and shape their artist brand in the desired way. So there were very few exceptions where they have not been portrayed in the way that they wanted to be portrayed. And now one could argue that they were simply control freaks. <laughs> and that's, that's fair enough. Yeah, you could say that. But it has many benefits. Yeah, if you have total control on your artist image and how you are presented as an artist brand, if you put a lot of effort into that, then you can create a piece of art out of your artist personality or your artist yeah, construct as a whole that is much bigger than you as a person or your music. It is that bigger overarching concept that somehow starts to work if you take really good care of your artist brand. Okay, learning number three. Think and create conceptually. So Kraftwerk have always relied on strong concepts for their albums, for their tours, for art exhibitions. And whether it's the plain clarity, for example, of her famous album Autobahn or the glitchy patterns of Computer World, the concept of Kraftwerk have always served as a red thread for music, but also for the visuals. And you can really see, feel, hear and touch that when you yeah, immerse yourself in their art. It's quite interesting how much of a difference this makes if you dive deep into this whole immersive experience. And the big advantage of thinking conceptually as an artist is that you have a lot of reference points. So this helps you find inspiration and connect the individual dots to the bigger picture. On the other hand, the disadvantage of concepts is that they can also limit you to a certain degree. And you might feel trapped in a concept, wishing you had never imposed it upon your art. But overall, looking at Kraftwerk's catalog, I would say that they have done a fantastic job of using concepts to their advantage. They loosely revolve around certain topics, but they don't feel forced in any way. And this is great. This is like the sweet spot. You get a lot of inspiration, you get a lot of input artistically, but you don't feel trapped. Now, one could say that Kraftwerk itself is a concept rather than a band. So this idea of the man machine <laughs> reaches beyond the band members and their fate as mortal human beings. And this might very well be the reason why Kraftwerk make a lot of sense in that art world. Yeah? So it just works when you see a Kraftwerk exhibition. There's no need for the original band members to be present in any way. The concept itself just works. Yeah? Okay, let's come to point number four. You don't need to be an extrovert to be interesting. So here's the thing, upcoming artists often think that they have to be outgoing in order to be interesting. And yeah, having the right social media strategy and being constantly present, this seems to be more important than ever. But think again, think about Kraftwerk. Even if Instagram wasn't a thing when Kraftwerk had their breakthrough, there have been other forms of media that they could have used to their advantage. But instead of being on every magazine cover and giving loads of interviews, these robots weren't very interested in publicity. So yes, here and there you find articles, you find interviews and so on. But they were not pushing it. So guess what happened? The media got even more curious about these weird, secretive German guys. And Kraftwerk sometimes even fooled journalists as well as fans, just putting robots instead of themselves on stage or letting them pose for pictures. And all of this tells us that it's not always the loudest voice that gets heard in the public. It's the one that has something interesting to say. And sometimes even the one that is more secretive than you would expect. And this is exactly what Kraftwerk used to their advantage. So think about your position right now. If you are producing really valuable artistic music that has something to say, it's not important that you are the new Instagram star, that you collect many likes, many shares, many whatever you're after. I don't even know what that stuff is called on, on TikTok. But yeah, this is not something you should be after. You should just stick with creating awesome stuff and then finding a way of positioning yourself in an interesting way. Yeah, It's not so much about these short tactics and being always present and so on. This might work for a short period of time, but it's not the thing that makes a difference over the yeah, five-year, ten-year horizon of your artist career. 
So the last thing on my list of things we can learn from Kraftwerk is be futuristic. So one of the most annoying things about electronic music, especially techno these days, is that everybody seems to copy the past instead of producing futuristic music again. And this whole genre was once based on the idea of futurism. And Kraftwerk have always managed to sound futuristic. Even today, Kraftwerk's 3D audiovisual shows feel like the future. And this is phenomenal, considering that they're playing songs from the last four decades. I find that today's electronic music scene is playing it a bit too safe and has forgotten about futurism. Why can't you be the pioneer of tomorrow's musical landscape? Why can't you predict something that is going to happen technologically or socially? So be brave and dare to experiment instead of using the same old 303 line on top of an 808 kick. And let's just take Kraftwerk as an example again. So think about this. They wrote their famous album Computer World between 1978 and 1981. And the tracks and the lyrics talk about things that are super relevant today. So, for example, the abuse of data by the government or the convergent development of machines and people, yeah, of robots somehow taking... Yeah, the shape of a human person, maybe thinking about emotions and so on. Yeah, All of these things were super futuristic concepts that they yeah, used artistically and implemented them in their music. And to be honest with you, I don't see much of that happening in today's contemporary electronic music scene. And I'm wondering why. Why is nobody thinking about the future? Why don't I see a very good futuristic approach to music in general right now? So keep that in mind, this could be you. You could be the one that brings futurism back into electronic music and really, really goes for it. Futurism, and I mean true futurism, definitely needs a comeback. Okay, let's put this into action now. Kraftwerk and techno. What can you learn as a modern music producer? So now that you know why I believe that Kraftwerk are more important than the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix together. <laughs> yes, I just said that out loud. Let's try to implement some of the things that you've learned in this episode. And here are my three action steps to help you get started. Action step number one. Explore ways in your music that are free from preconceptions and boundaries. So even if you believe that nothing is truly original, that's fair enough, try to find aspects of your music that aren't typical cliches of contemporary electronic music. Commit to deliberate experimentation and give yourself the time to explore new techniques and technologies. And keep a futuristic perspective in your creation process instead of looking back at what has been done in your genre over and over again. Action step number two, work with concepts that inspire your music as well as your visual aesthetics. So for your next EP or single or album, try to work with a concept that nurtures the creative process musically as well as visually. And maybe there's even a way to collaborate with, for example, a talented friend or a professional graphic designer to explore visual enhancements of your musical output. I think this audio-visual aspect is not something that necessarily... Yeah, it degrades the musical experience. I think it can enhance it if it's done well. If it's not done well, well, yeah, then that's a different discussion. But overall, I think there's a lot of potential in that experience coming together of audio aspects and visual aspects. All right, action step number three. Stop putting yourself under pressure because of social media. <laughs> and yes, I'm talking about this again and again. Social media can help you reach an audience and build a following of true fans. But it's not the essence of your job as an artist. Many successful artists, Kraftwerk is just one example, have had a lot of success by playing against the rules of publicity. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't need to think about promoting yourself. Yeah, This is not what I mean here, but maybe there are other clever ways of doing it your way instead of jumping on the bandwagon and trying out the latest little Instagram growth hack. Yeah, So, be clever. If this is not the thing that comes natural to you, then maybe there's another way of doing things. All right, that is it for this week's episode on Kraftwerk and Techno. I hope this was helpful to you. 
So what do you think about Kraftwerk? Have they influenced you in any way? Do you think that they are a little bit too overhyped? Yeah, that's also a fair opinion. You can either go to pickyourselfpodcast.com and directly leave a comment on the specific blog post for this episode. But you can also simply join our Facebook community, pickyourselfpodcast.com slash community, and leave a comment there in the discussion thread. And if public discussion is not your thing, I'm also happy to hear from you via email, philip at copilco-productions.com. I'm super happy to get your insights, get feedback from you, get episode ideas. So feel free to request topics. That's also fine. And yeah, if you want to grow your artist career a little bit further, then I highly suggest you check out the seven strategies of highly successful electronic music artists. That is a free PDF that I have prepared for you at pickyourselfpodcast.com slash free. And in this PDF guide that takes you like five minutes to consume, I have collected the strategies that have worked for my most successful studio clients. And we're talking about people here that have yeah, played worldwide tours, that have had massive success. And yeah, I'm sharing the things that they have learned for free with you. Just go to pickyourselfpodcast.com slash free. I would love to hear from you and find out if that has helped you. Okay, see you next week. Bye bye. don't want to miss any of the upcoming episodes please make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app and you can find detailed blog posts for every single episode on pickyourselfpodcast.com until then see you next time